The inspection of hardware and sling fittings includes 1. Initial inspection upon purchase 2. Frequent inspection by a competent person prior to each use and 3. Periodic, at least annual inspection accomplished by a qualified person as part of a thorough inspection program. These inspections are usually accomplished by a visual examination for damage and abuse. In severe duty and special circumstances, non-destructive testing may be required in addition to the visual inspection. The first step in rigging any load is being sure the sling can handle the job. Federal workplace rules say that all slings, fastenings, and attachments must be inspected each day before they're used. The most common slings include synthetic strapping, chain, and wire rope. It's the rigger's responsibility to know the capacity of all lifting devices. Also check the capacities of any hardware the sling will be attached to, including hooks, shackles, rings, and tackle blocks. Don't forget to inspect the shackles, rings, and hooks. A worn shackle, a stretched, cracked, or twisted hook, or a hook with a broken or missing safety latch is an open invitation to an accident and costly fines for safety code violations. Here are some examples of equipment that should never be used in a professional rigging job. Chain that's been bolted together. Distorted shackles. Gouged or cracked shackles, bales, eyes, or hooks. A hook that's been cut or welded back together. A hook with a stretched throat. A consumer-grade bolt used in place of the original equipment pin and cotter. The inspection of rigging hardware includes a visual examination for deformation, wear, cracks, nicks, gouges, modification, and proper function. Deformation any significant deformation of any rigging hardware is cause for removal from service. In hoist hooks, ASME B30.10 allows a 5% increase in throat opening not to exceed one quarter of an inch. However, Crosby recommends that hooks be removed from service if there is any significant deformation. The same requirement for all hardware. Quick check marks on Crosby hooks facilitate measuring throat opening. To check, use a tape measure to measure the distance between the marks. The marks should align to either an inch or half inch increment. If they don't, the hook must be inspected further for possible damage. Wear 10% or more wear in most areas of fittings is cause for removal. 5% or more wear in the eye or throat of the hook is cause for removal. The 10% wear allowance is based on any cross-sectional dimension. If wear is in two directions in the same area, wear is limited to 5% of the section. Wear is also limited to 5% in two critical areas of hooks. Cracks Evidence of cracks, sharp nicks, or gouges is cause for removal. Cracks can form if a properly made fitting is repeatedly overloaded. A crack can form if non-heat treated fittings are used in frequently cycled loads that are within the working load limit. Crosby allows a qualified person to remove sharp nicks or gouges with a file or by light grinding such as with a pencil grinder. The qualified person must grind longitudinally following the contour of the fitting. Do not exceed 5% reduction of any cross-sectional dimension. Do not grind cracks. Contact Crosby Engineering to evaluate any cracks. Visual inspection of swivel fittings should include shoulder running clearance, lateral movement, wear and deformation. The hook being demonstrated is a single point type. Regardless of the specific design of a hook, the maintenance rules remain the same. It's important to remember there is no substitute for regular visual inspection in the field as the first step in a good maintenance program. The shoulder running clearance between the swivel case and the shoulder is generally set at 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch at the factory. Clearance is greater than 1 8 to 3 16ths of an inch or excessive lateral movement may indicate dangerous looseness or wear of the assembly. Disassembly and further inspection of the unit is required. Any fitting attached to these blocks or tackle in a block and tackle system which exhibit any deformation or wear in excess of 10% of its original dimension should be removed from service. In the inspection of hooks for deformation, the throat opening is particularly critical. 
although some sources allow for a percentage of increase in a hook's throat opening, we strongly recommend that a hook showing any deformation in this area be taken out of service. Our years of experience in the industry have convinced us that a hook showing this type of damage is an indication that not only has the hook been loaded beyond its working load limit, but likewise the entire block and tackle system has been overloaded at some time in the past. In such a case, all components of the system must be carefully inspected. Sometimes your inspection of a hook may reveal a twist. If this twist exceeds 10 degrees, the hook should be taken out of service. Hooks should be checked for nicks, gouges, and cracks. These damages can affect the integrity of the hook's load-bearing capacity. Any detected crack in a hook is reason to take the hook out of service. We recommend, as minimum, checking hooks and similar critical load-bearing parts using magnetic particle or dye penetrate inspection yearly for cracks. Trained personnel can repair nicks and gouges by grinding in the direction in which the hook curves. Make the ground surface smooth and gradually blend into the original surface of the hook. Such grinding must not reduce the original dimension more than 10% in zone B or 5% in zone C. If the repair or wear on a hook has exceeded these limits, the hook must be removed from service. Because zone A is a low stress zone, it's not normally necessary to repair nicks or gouges in this area. Do not create sharp nicks in critical areas when you stamp identification marks in hardware. Crosby provides stamping instructions, which require low stress or dot faced stamps of appropriate size on indicated areas. Crosby provides a raised flat pad on all 3 quarter ton to 25 ton anchor shackles. This raised pad allows stampings or identification, inspection date, or any desired information. This pad eliminates stress risers caused by stamping. Modification Welding, substitution of parts, and bending are examples of modification. Remove rigging from service that has been modified in the field. Never modify a shackle, wedge socket, or any hardware by substituting parts from any other manufacturer or source. Always use a pin, bolt, or wedge that is provided by the manufacturer. Any modification will mean that the working load limit is no longer valid. The person modifying the fitting is responsible for design, testing, and marking. Proper function. Improperly installed hardware or malfunction is cause for removal from service. Some examples are missing latches when required, damaged latches when present, swivel bearings that do not freely rotate, missing or malfunctioning locking and retaining devices such as snap rings, cotter pins, nuts and bolts. Hardware with non-ferrous materials or lubricated bearings must not be subjected to elevated temperatures. Galvanized, plated or painted hardware may suffer degradation of the surface finish. Extended exposure to elevated temperatures will cause surface scaling and reduction of properties. Severe corrosion at the rope end connection, which has caused pitting or binding of wires, is cause for removal. Light rusting usually does not affect strength. Clean and relubricate the wire rope properly by consulting the wire rope manufacturer. 